So one of you asked for a quick look on how the suspension system works. I've taken the whole other half of this car apart and it's been a long time kind of just sitting on a shelf or in a box. It's kind of a miracle that it's still together. But just because it's still kind of around, I thought I would just show you. As you can see, the, um, the steering rack's no longer connected to the, um, the hubs and stuff, but the suspension system is at least the bit that links it to the lever is still um, is still there so as you can see if I lift the this front of where the car would be up and lower it you can see those levers move and that's because this thing is attached at an angle inside the car so I mean I'm sorry inside of the the wishbone so that means that it pushes into the vehicle as this moves up just because of that angle. And when it pushes in, it meets this ball joint here, which is on the edge of a lever. And so that pushes that lever and twists that axle. And then, kind of third step, I suppose, is that hits another lever, which is attached to a shock absorber initially. And then I remove the shock absorber. Because of the length of these wishbones and the amount of travel that they provide you need a lot more um, tension from the spring because the spring compared to the amount of travel on one end of the lever um, the spring has a lot less travel and it means that you know that kind of uh, just because of the lever action of it you you end up needing a much tighter spring and it, it was too tight kind of what was needed it was far too uh, tight than uh, for, for what Lego had to offer. So what I ended up doing instead was creating a um, uh, uh, What you call a push rod torsion rod system and uh, F1 cars do have this F1 cars have um, Torsion rods in them, but they also have dampeners and shock absorbers as well They have a whole system that can be tuned to the needs of the track of the driver all those different things um, and they're all kind of modular and modifiable. This obviously is not because we're dealing with Lego. But what I did was I fixed this to here. I fixed that kind of maybe into so using a kind of weird cheaty kind of geometry of Lego. And what you got was when this is fixed, if I can hold this back maybe with my thumb, you have, oh, let's talk maybe not back, totally. But yeah, there we go. You have some spring to it. So I'm doing this with one hand, so it's a little tricky. Um, but yeah, you have some spring to it. And the reason is because these little axles, uh, which I'm using as that kind of torsion rod, it's a little sticking out a little bit after all these years and stuff, you know, seen some things. So um, the thing is with these little axles is they do have a bit of flex. They have a bit of spring to them when you twist them. It's a little bit of twist in the uh, that ABS plastic, so uh, leveraging that um, that quality that's not really intended. I mean, Lego is intended to be kind of as rigid as possible, and in fact, that's why they use ABS because ABS is one of the better um, kind of plastics for that. They use other injection molded plastics like um, like polypropylene. It would have been it would we would have had a very flimsy. Um, you know, flimsy toy, and uh, some other plastics would have been more prone to cracking. Um, so a ABS is perfect, and uh, this is not something that is necessarily intended. It's not an intended um, function of Lego, but it was a good solution for what I had because there were no springs to provide that level of torsion that was needed to carry both batteries and different motors for the drive of this vehicle so um so yeah that's really how that works if that doesn't give you if this doesn't answer any of your questions i sincerely apologize and just send me a message or something um, i'll be happy to respond um, as far as instructions this is really a proof of concept and it's not something i would recommend building because there's a lot of issues with it it's not going to be very fun to drive more of a proof of concept type thing and, and an example for that is this this thing is just one stud 
to stick a wheel on. That's ridiculous. You need two, really, preferably, or a hub. The other thing is, is that this actually tends to pull out of that lever. It tends to come out because it's being pushed that way. It gets at actually the tension of the weight of the car it tends to want to pull this even further towards that way, meaning that that lever gets um, it pulls out that uh, what would you call it the uh, ball joint. So yeah, there's a lot of issues that really need to be ironed out with this um, this design, and I've yet to really do that. I have some ideas. And they're fairly simple problems to solve. I won't be able to use these wishbone pieces. They have to go. Um, because a lot of what this what's going on here is just trying to trying to accommodate for that design, and it's just too delicate, too flimsy. Anyways, that's that's all I have uh, as far as explanations go. Um, so thank you for watching. Thank you for taking an interest. I really appreciate that, and um, I hope this helps you in some way.